up one more time for the worship team. Didn't they do a great job? Awesome job this morning. Thank you so much. Good to have you back on the drums today, Alex. Give Alex a hand. And man, always miss him when he's out. Miss you. Appreciate you, buddy. Um, so, so good to be in the house of the Lord today. And, uh, you know, many of you, if you've been coming the last few weeks, we started our vision month. We started our sermon series called Build This Church. Build This Church. And it's always like to review because, you know, sometimes we miss a Sunday here and there. So I want to let you know what we've been talking about. So the first week, we talked about building it together. Remember that? Had the hard hat, looked like a fool up here with a tool belt. Yeah, I was getting into it. I was saying, hey, we got some building we got to do here at the church. And now everybody need, everybody plays a part in it, right? It's just not one or the other. Everybody coming together. And then last week, we talked about building hope. Anybody enjoy that last week? You better get your hands up. Come on. Yeah, building hope. We talked about hope because everybody needs to hear about hope. If not, then something's wrong with you. But we, we talked about building hope and how it's hard to have hope in today's society and the world that we live in. And we talked most importantly about how this church needs to be a place of hope, that people that come in would be like, there's something different about this. I feel better that I've been in. It's a hope that only he can bring that comes here in the church and that we can also offer outside of the church. And so today, we're going to talk a little bit about a party. You're like, what? I came to church. I don't mean we can't have a party up in here. Come on. And so we're going to talk about a party. And uh, we're going to be looking at a passage, a parable in the Bible from Luke 14. If you have your Bible, so if not, we got it on the screen because that's how we read nowadays. Uh, Luke 14, I still like to read it right here even though I can't read a single thing. Uh, we're going to look at uh, chapter 14 starting with verse 15. And we're going to go all the way to verse 25. Are you ready? Say, or 24, or something like that. Are you ready? Say, let's go. And when one of those at the table with him heard this, he said to Jesus, Blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. And Jesus replied, A certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. And at the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. Say excuses. Oh, boy. And the first said, Well, I've bought a field, and I must go and see it. Please excuse me. And another said, Well, I have just bought five yoke of oxen, and I'm on my way to try them out, so please excuse me. And another said, I just got married, so I can't come. That's a smart dude right there, you know what I'm saying? He'd be sleeping on the couch. <laughs> yeah, that definitely was smart thinking. And the servant came back and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry, and he ordered his servant. He said, look, he said, I want you to go out quickly into the streets and the alleys of the town and bring in the poor, come on, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. So he's come back, and he says, sir, he said, what you order me to do has been done, but there is still room. Come on, say that. There's still room. Then the master told his servant, he said, I need you to go out again, brother. He said, you're going to go out to the roads. Check this out. I love this. And the country lanes and compel them to come in so that my house, come on, will be full. And I tell you, not one of those who were invited will get a taste of my house banquet. I believe, ladies and gentlemen, we need to build a party. Are you ready? We're going to build the party. Hence my title today. We need to build a party because I believe that there is people out there that need to experience the love of Jesus. And they experience the love of Jesus by an invitation that brings them into this place that they can feast at the table with him, that they can be full of his word, full of his compassion. And it starts by us making sure that we build the party. Are you ready to pray? Because we might need it. You'd be like, what? I'm coming to church. We're talking about parties. Yep, this is the best place to have a party. Uh, God, I ask that you would just anoint this service. Lord, you're already here. We thank you. Lord, we again remember Jaden. God, tomorrow we think of Miss Phyllis, Lord, lost loved ones, recovering that man. There's so many people 
Lord, I know I'll probably forget someone, but Lord, you know every single request. You know every person that is struggling. You know every procedure that's coming up. God, we lift them all up to you. But Lord, we ask that today you would open our ears, God, and our eyes because there are people, Lord, out in our city. There are people in our workplace. There are people in our family. There are people in our gro- in the grocery store that we go to, Lord, in the restaurants that we go to who so desperately need to know about a man named Jesus. And so, God, I pray you would give us the courage as we learn more about it today that we wouldn't just sit right here in our chairs, but that, Lord, that we would go bring them in, that Jesus said there is more room. It's still not full. And my man, Jesus, loves him a full house. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen, amen. Anybody here love to get invited to a party? Yeah, it's a good feeling, isn't it? To get invited to a party, you're like, yeah, I get invited to this party. But there's a lot of things that I think about when I get invited to a party. Okay, are you ready for this? First, I want to know who else is coming to the party. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm trying to go party and have some fun, and I need to be around some people that I know I can crack some jokes with and have a good time. So that's the first thing. The next thing I want to know is what are we eating at the party? Come on, what's on the menu, y'all? Because, you know, cheese and crackers are good. And, and you know, I, ain't, I, I, I love me some meatballs. I ain't never had one I didn't like, you know, as you can tell. But I'm just saying, like, but then there's, there's also some parties I go to that, like, have some, like, food, like a feast. And that's what I'm talking about. It's an important part of the party. Y'all, okay, say, that's all right, Pastor, preach it. Okay, I thought you never asked me to. Okay, here we go. So I thought about an invitation of, to a party that I'll never forget. Okay, I was thinking about all kinds of parties. I was thinking about parties when my kids were little. I started thinking about parties that I was invited to over the years of people in the church. But then there was this one party that I was like, man, I got to tell them about it because it was some kind of party. Okay, so one of my brothers got engaged, right? And we were like, thank you, Jesus. You work in great ways. <laughs> Woo! So anyway, he gets engaged, and we're, like, so excited and so proud. And, and his, um, my sister-in-law's family, um, they decided that they were going to have an engagement party. And so they were inviting everybody over, and I was like, okay, okay. So I was like, who all is going to be there, you know? And I'm like, I might not know everybody. That's okay. I got to go support my brother, you know, what's up? And so I was like, I hope there's some good food. You know, I didn't tell him that. And we get all dressed up and everything. We're on our way, and I just remember, like, my parents, we were talking in the car because, you know, they lived, they had a beautiful piece of property. They lived on the Nanticoke River. We were like, oh, snap, you know, we thought we were something. And we were getting ready to go up to this party. And so I was, you know, I could tell that my dad was wanting me to behave, you know. And I could tell that, you know, they were having conversations with my brother and I, my other brother, that, you know, we got to behave. These are people that are going to be a part of our family, you know. So the pressure was on. I couldn't act crazy like I do today. And so I was like, all right, so we go to the place, and, man, it's beautiful. Beautiful, and we walk in, and I just remember it was more than just like a few meatballs. Like my girl, it was like a feast. There was food everywhere, and I remember that I was like, man, I checked it out because the first place I went was to the kitchen area, and I looked at the spread, and I remember thinking, man, she has spaghetti. Like I can do this. So I got a big plate of spaghetti, and I'm walking with my family through the line. Everybody's having a good time. I'm a little nervous because I don't know many people, but I'm proud of my brother. And I get my spaghetti, and I go to sit down, and there's really no places to sit. And so she was like, oh, it's okay, sweetheart. Go on in the living room, get your, and I'll get some TV trays. You go in there and sit down in there. It's no problem at all. So I get in there, and we're all hanging out, and um, I'm a little, you know, I'm like, okay, it's so awkward. I'm in the living room, but whatever. And so I'm eating my spaghetti, and I don't know what happened. But next thing I know, my whole plate of spaghetti is now turned upside down on the white carpet in her special living room area, okay? Now, I didn't know this soon-to-be, well, sister-in-law's mother. I, did, I didn't know her until this time. And let's just say I put an impression on her that she'll never forget me. And everything that was said in the car on the way to the party, <laughs> I was scared to get in the car when I went to leave because I knew I'd probably be in trouble. So um, all I know is 
was that I was looking at my parents' face, and they were like, like they couldn't believe that I dropped the there. So, of course, my mom's getting up, and she's like, oh, I'll get it. Like, and then the, her name was Miss Edna. She was like, oh, no, I'll get it. She was the sweetest thing. So they get down there, and I felt so bad because they're scrubbing up this red sauce that is on this white carpet, and I felt terrible. But I got to say, the food was great. I mean, the little bit I got in my mouth was great. And it was a great rest of the party, but it's a party that I'll never forget. And I thought, man, you know, how could I be so stupid to drop this plate? But she, was, she made it okay. And I remember getting in the car thinking, man, this, this party was pretty good. I, I enjoyed it even though I messed up and dropped the plate of food on her carpet. And I got thinking about who else liked parties. Can I say proudly that Jesus loved himself from hardest? Jesus brought parties everywhere he went. Jesus interrupted parties. Let me tell you what he did. Because he would interrupt, he'd come in the scene, on the scene and people would have depression and people would be there, you know, with, when discouraged as all get out. And Jesus come and busting up on the party, crashing it. He's like, let me interrupt this so I can bring you some joy up in the scene. Let me bring you a party of encouragement. Let me bring you a party of love and forgiveness because that's who Jesus was. And we see that he was a party man all throughout his ministry. From the beginning of his ministry even to the end, we see him crash a house and bring himself a party in the house. Like that's just who he was. He would eat with people and talk with people and people would roll their nose up. Why is he with them? They're sinners. Bah, bah, bah. And Jesus like, I'm just trying to get over here and eat some rolls, you know what I'm saying? And trying to, you know, have some sweet tea with these people and get to know them because he loved his food. He loved his parties. And in this text, we see that that's what he's doing. He's, he's gathering around. There's a party. And he's saying, this party is happening now. And he said, at this party, he said, it's, it's like the kingdom of heaven, this party is. And he said, we've got to come in. We got some good food. He was ready to go. And so in this parable of Luke 14, Jesus is talking to his disciples. And one of them were at the table. He said, blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. Can I just, when I read that, I about did a cartwheel in my house. Now, that would have been a sight. But I about did a cartwheel because I started thinking about the kingdom of heaven. I mean, I started, thought about, uh, mm, I started thinking about heaven, and then I started thinking about food, and I got really excited because I bet they got some good fish up in heaven. Come on, somebody. I bet they got some good roast beef. Come on. And some, oh, chicken pot pie. Mm. Man, I had that the other day. My neighbor brought that over. I said, glory. And, um, and so, I mean, can you imagine? sitting together, having a feast with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Oh, man, I'm feeling good. Can you imagine, man, having a bad day and then, boom, you show up in heaven, you pull yourself up a seat, you sit at the table like, hey, Jesus, oh, snap, there's, there's Aunt Louise. Oh, man, I, oh, praise God, it's good to see you. And then you look over, oh, there's my great-grandfather. Oh, oh, there's my other loved one that died and went to heaven. And you're gathering around together, reminiscing at the Father's house, sitting at the table, having a feast. Jesus loved himself a party. Aren't you glad that you serve a God that loved to have a good time? Come on, one stiff neck, wasn't all coming in, pouting everywhere. He loved to gather gather with people. He loved the fellowship. He loved to minister to people who were hurting and people who had been rejected because he's Jesus and he loves us like that. Man, you're talking about a good feast because it's one thing to go to somebody's house and eat some food and have some good um, cheese dip, crab dip. That's what I'm getting at. It's, it's good to have that. But when you're with Jesus, can you imagine the kind of time and the feast that he had? And so they're, they're at the party. Jesus is there. He's like, hey, we got to go. We got to eat. Let's go. So he tells the servant, you know, the story. The servant goes out, and he's trying to bring the people in. He's like, it's, it's ready. You know, it's ready to go. It's time to eat. You know, it's like me in the house. Hey, it's time to eat. It's ready. You know, and everybody comes flooding out. That's what they did. They went out. Hey, it's time to eat. It's ready. The invitation was out. The party was to start at 7 p.m. 
There was cooking going on. There was cleaning going on. There was some kaboom in the toilets going on. And that smell was, man, it was, it was making the place, man, smell so good. They were ready. And the servants went out. They're like, come on, everybody. Let's go to the party. Let's go. Let's get our grub on. And nobody showed up at the party. And so the servant goes and tells the master, master, sorry, man, like, I know that bread be smelling good, and them steak be cooking up, but, you know, there ain't nobody coming. He said, I'll tell you what I want you to do. He was angry. But then he says, I want you to go out in the streets. Come on. I want you to go out in the streets, and I want you to bring them to me. Hey, how about you bring me all the people, man? Bring me, bring me the crippled ones. Go ahead. Get them in here. I'll take the blind. Come on, I'll take the lane. Bring them in here. So he went, and he did just as he said. He comes back. He says, Master, I did what you said. He said, oh, I'm not done yet. He said, because I still got plenty of room in here. This place is not full yet. He said, oh, because how are you glad that Jesus, man, he just wants a full house. He wants a packed house. So he says, hey, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go out on country lanes. I want you to go out there, and I want you to get those people to come in. And so that's what he did. He went and he asked the people to come in because Jesus, man, he wanted to make sure that everybody got an invitation because this was a feast, y'all. This was a feast. This was a party uh, that, that he would be at where it would be just like the kingdom of heaven, that his word was presented, that the time with Jesus was there, and it was so important that the invitation go out so that the people could come in. And I love the part where it says that he says there's more room. Right? There's room. It's not full. He, so he kept sending them back until they brought them in as a full house. See, Jesus loves himself a packed house. He loves himself a packed house. And so for many of you, when you look around you and you see an empty seat, you're like, oh, praise God, I see an empty seat. I don't have to sit all up close with somebody because their breath be kicking, you know. And I don't have to sit all up that close to somebody because sometimes, man, they come in. I don't know what they be doing before they come, but mm, you know, it like, I'm trying to pay attention to Pastor D, but that odor be like, ooh, you know, and we look and we think that, but to Jesus, it's different. When he sees that empty sea, he sees a person, right, that needs to be sitting there. He sees a person that needs to be healed. He sees a person who's struggling with addiction. He sees a person who so desperately needs to be loved. And so for Jesus, he wants a full house. I'm looking for somebody in here who's like, Pastor Dana, I love to show a full house, but I believe that God wants a full house up in here. See, we got to get, we got to have people Right, who will stop with the excuses, and that's what they did. And they're like, come on in. They're like, oh, well, excuse me, but, uh, you know, uh, they had excuse after excuse. And I wonder how many of us have had excuses about coming into the house of the Lord or about inviting other people into the house of the Lord. Because I, I believe that God is calling us as a church. I believe that God is calling us as people who say that we love him, but, but what are we doing? Are we just going into work every day and just be like, hey, what's up? And just trying to get our, check, our little list done, you know what I'm saying, checking it off, and then going home. What, what about the people who are all around you at work, who you know just went through a divorce? And people around you, you know that woman's been up at night crying, knowing how, don't know how she's going to pay her bills because her husband done walked out. The one that she was at the altar with saying, you know, for better or for worse, come on, sickness and all that good stuff. Like, we're, like what happened to that? And, then, and they're trying to struggle with that. But when we're walking past them, right, and we're not telling them about the party. We're not telling them about a place that they could come and they could feast for the kingdom of heaven. Like, we're not... We're not into that because, you know what I'm saying, it's all like, you know, we just get busy. You know, we get busy, and our priorities get out of whack, right? And, and last time I checked in Matthew 5, Jesus gives this great message of all time, the Sermon on the Mount. And when he's there, he says something like this. He says that we are the salt of the earth. Now, how many of you like some salt? Come on. Salt makes everything taste better. Can I get a witness? Yeah, I mean, I can't wait to get some corn on the cob. Man, I'll tell you what, sitting outside, I'm ready for some good weather. I mean, I'm talking about some nice weather and some good corn on the cob with an extra pound of butter, come on, and some salt, you know, and put some, and salt makes everything taste better. Get some maters, come on, Mr. Don, put, put a little salt on, not much, because you got some good maters. Put a smack some mayo on that sandwich, man, mm, that's some good eating. But salt makes everything taste better. 
And what Jesus is saying in this kind of text is this. He's saying, hey, you know what? You, you got some saltiness. He was like, I, I want you to take that salt, right? And I want you to go flavor up the flavor of God all around your workplace and all around people who are hurting. And I want you to bring this flavor and I want you to let them know why you smile all the time. I want you to go bring a little seasoning in upon their life and let them know about this man named Jesus because, hey, let's be honest, y'all. Every time you go out in the world, it ain't like they be hyper and encouraged all the time. Let's be honest. It's a dark world and Jesus is like, and I need you. Like, you are the salt, so you better get salty, and you got to get up in there, and you got to tell people and say, you know what? The joy of the Lord is my strength, and you got to say it can be your strength, too, and you got to go in the workplace and be like, here's some Mickey D's coffee. I want you to go ahead, and I want you to have a good day, and you start loving on people, but see, if we're not careful, the enemy, what he does is he likes to keep us busy and sidetracked because he don't want anybody telling, he don't want us telling the other people about the party. And so what he does is he, he gets us to a place where we lose our saltiness. We used to be excited. Man, God's good, man. Man, he got me through that really hard time. Man, I'm going to go to church, man. I'm going to go to church Sunday. I'm going to go, well, I'm just going to go all the time that the doors are open. We get fired up. We're here early, knocking on the door. Where's that pastor at? I'm ready to have church. Going to work, telling everybody about it. But what happens after a while? We lose our saltiness. We forget about the people out there that we're supposed to be flavoring a little Jesus upon. And it's all about us. Why, well, you know, why does this have to happen to me? And, you know, and I just don't understand. And it's just me, me, me. And they didn't do this for me. And they never text me. And then it all becomes about me. And we lose our priority. Come on, our, our priorities are all out of whack. You know, we become busy, we become stressed out. Oh, yeah, that's some of you today. And all this stuff's going on, and we lose our saltiness. And he also tells us that we need to be the light of the world. Like, you and I, we should be the light. When people see us, be like, there's something different about them. And they be smiling all the time. Hey, I know why they're smiling all the time, because they got Jesus in their heart. Because they love Jesus, because they've had a taste of him, because they know about him. And that's what happens is the enemy does not like that. And so he distracts us, and he's like, you know, it's okay, you can go to church. So we come into church, but we don't really tap into who Jesus is, because Jesus really ain't our top priority. You know, am I, am I preaching all right? And that's, that's, that's what begins to happen in our life. And if we're not careful, right, we, we forget about who he is and what we've been called to do. Because we become busy. And the enemy wants to keep piling up things on your list so that you won't be able to go open your Murph, come on, somebody, and go tell somebody about Jesus. And so what we do is we go through the motions and we go to work and we go around people who are hurting and we're just like, hey, how you doing? I'm, I'm thinking about you. Yeah, I got you. I'm thinking about you. Yeah, I'll... I'll make sure I tell the pastor about, we'll be praying, you know, and then we, we walk around and, and slowly Jesus is not our priority anymore. Oh, and sometimes we do this. Well, I would invite so-and-so to church, but I heard. Mm. I mean, I mean, preach it up, Pastor D, but... I, I mean, that person ain't going to come into church. That person ain't got time to be coming up in here with those kinds of people. Are you kidding me? I can't. And, and we, what we do is we, we look at others and we begin to judge them based off of what they did. Hey, last time I checked, Jesus wouldn't have parties with everybody. Jesus wasn't judging nobody. He was with the sinners. Hey, okay, recline back at a table with them. Yep, talking to them. Walk, hey, encourage them. Having a meal with them. When's the last time we did that? When's the last time that we, come on, when was the last time that we invited somebody like that or even paid attention to somebody like that and even just sat down and, and talked with them and asked how they were doing? But see, we don't, we don't do that because we're, we're busy. And if we're not careful as a church, we can lose our saltiness and we can just get stuck inward. 
and our thinking and all about these four walls. Now, as much as I love everybody that's here, every single one of you, every single one of you, I try to take time before I preach, and it's hard sometimes. I, I try to give you attention to let you know how much I love you, right, and how much you are important to me. And I'm so glad that you're here. How are you doing? What's going on? But sometimes I don't get to everybody, so don't get upset. But, but what I'm trying to say is something that doesn't have anything to do with that. But, but what I'm trying to say is I'm trying to make sure that I talk to everybody because I want you all to know how important you are. And I wonder what would happen if we become people like that. If we're not careful, we, we get stuck in here. But there's people out there that's just as important about the people that come in here. They're, they're, that's what the church, that's why we need to be the salt, is to get out there to bring people in here, to tell people about Jesus. But we have to be careful. We, we become so busy, we don't see them. We ride right past them. I'm guilty of that. Can I share a story? There's this girl, this girl, okay? And I see her walking all the time. And I'm like, I can tell she's up to no good, okay? I, just, I did my research, and I, I found out some things, okay? And so I ride by, and of course, those things, you know, I'm a pastor, but I was like, okay, okay, I know who that is, you know? And I see her all around town, and I sit in my office, and I look out the window, and I see her walking up and down the streets with these guys, all right? And I, I'm seeing her walk around, and I did some research, and I found out who her family was, and I know a member of the family. I'm like, oh, cool, I remember them, blah, blah, blah. And so I was like, okay, well, that, that makes me even more curious about this girl. So I could hear other people talking that I know about this girl and like, oh, yeah, she's blah, 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 blah. And something inside of me was like, you need to love on this girl. Like, what would happen if you just, like, started sharing a little love with her, a little Jesus with her? Like, like what would she do? So one day I was, I was going home, and I was going, like, 100 miles down this road, but they know who I am, you know what I'm saying? But I was, the cops around here know I am. So I was, I was flying home. I was busy because... Because we have this thing in my house, you know, I have to have, well, I don't have to have. I would love to have food ready at a certain time. Because let's just say the vultures be coming home, you know what I'm saying? And they coming out the woodwork like, what's for, what's for dinner, you know? And texting during the day, and everybody's coming home, they're hungry, trying to have everything ready. So, so I'm flying down the road, and I go past the girl. And the Lord said, you better turn around. And you better go back and talk to that girl. I say, I ain't taught no girls. Roll my window down. She's going to think I'm crazy. So I, I rode past her, and I was like, mm. I turned around. I went up. I said, well, this is really going to be cute if I get locked up because I don't know. You know, I got this girl in my car. I don't know. But I was like, oh, well, here goes nothing. So I roll up, roll my window down. I'm like, hey. She was like, hey. I said, um, you need a ride? She's like, yeah, that'd be great. So she gets in. I'm like, oh, Lord, Jesus, help me. So she gets in the car, and I said, um, Hey, I see you. I see you walking all the time. I was like, so I just thought I'd, I'd, um, I'd just give you a ride. Would that be okay? She's like, oh, that's great. And she puts her arm on my lap. She said, I just want you to know you're so pretty. And I said, you know what? I'm glad you told me that because I picked you up and got you in this car to let you know that I think you're beautiful too. And she said, oh, really? I said, yeah. And I said, I got something else to tell you. She said, what's that? I said, you might not want to be in the car with me. She's like, why? I said, because I'm a preacher. You are? I said, I'm a preacher. I said, so if you're in this car, I just want you to know you're going to hear about Jesus, but you're also going to get loved on. Can I just love on you some more? She said, you sure can. I said, well, I think you're beautiful, and I think that Jesus has a plan and he has a purpose for you. She said, what? No one's ever told me that before. I said, I know. And she said, hold on. I think I know you. I said, you do. I said, I know someone in your family. She said, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, and you're from Emmanuel. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. We started connecting, and she said, you know what? I used to know Jesus. But now people look at me differently because I've messed up and made some mistakes. And I said, well, that's why I came to tell you today that you're beautiful. But you beat me to it. You told me before I told you. I said, but I'm here to, to help you out today. And I just want to tell you that you're beautiful. But I also want to tell you is you don't have to do things that you don't want to do. You know what I'm saying? She's like, oh, yeah. And I said, I want you to know that, that, that Jesus cares about you. She said, I used to go to church. And she said, where's your church at? I said, the one you've been walking by every single day. I, how do you know that? I said, because I sit right in my office that faces the road, 
and I see you walk by, and I just start praying in my office, Lord, give me, I got to find a way to get to this girl. Because everybody's so quick to talk about what the girl's done, but ain't nobody quick enough to roll their window down and say, let's get in here and let me tell you about a man named Jesus who doesn't care how you've messed up, who loves you no matter what. And so I thought, Lord Jesus, I don't care what people think. I don't care if they think, oh, why is she with this girl? I don't care Jesus was with people like that. So why can't I be with people like that? I want to be known to be the, the woman, of the, the ch- pastor of the church, riding through Fruitland with all these kinds of people. Like, what's she been doing? I'll be telling them about Jesus. You can think what you want to think, but I'll be telling them about Jesus. And one day I might make it on the news. I don't know. But until then, I'm going to keep picking people up and tell them to come on and pull up a seat at the table. Come on and pull up and let me tell you about my Jesus because I want you to know know that even though other people have turned their back on you and even though where I go every day because you know where I say yes I do it's right down the street from this church I know where you be from Fruitland Popos know your boyfriend like they told me be careful but I but I'm up here picking you up and I let her know that I said I know who you are doesn't matter what you've done so you know what happens now she still be walking these roads and I ride by and all of a sudden she'll go Hey, Pastor Dana, hey. And she'll wave to me sometimes. I roll down the window, I'm like, hey. And I can't say her name, but I'll be like, hey, girl, you know. And she be, and what, what does that have to do? Well, I just wanted to tell you that you can do the same thing. And it would have been easy to roll by her. It would have been easy to say, I ain't got time for this today. God, you're good like that, but I ain't got time. Man, I'm going to tell you what. I, if we would just take the time. If we would just take the time to build a party, y'all, and get the invitations out. Because some of us come into church like we're going to a funeral. This is the house of the Lord. Come on. And I love that as City Church, I hope you get the feeling. I like to have fun. I want you to have fun. Jesus is fun. He likes to go to parties just like we come in here for our party here today. Like we need to have fun and encourage one another. We don't need to be stiff-necked talking about the Bible. Man, Jesus is good. He's good all the time. Like he's wonderful like that, you know. He loves you like that. And so we've got to be people who don't lose our saltiness, who are connected with people out there. There's people that we're riding by, walking by, we don't even have time for, that just need to know not only about him, but need to know how much that you love them and you took the time to think about them. So I want to encourage you this week to, to take the time. Jesus says, I want a full house. And some of you come in, well, I had to park down, all the way down by the, by the woods. I had to walk all the way up here. You know what? You know, what, what, what's going to happen, come on, sometime next year where you got to park down the street? Yeah, somebody, and somebody's in the seat that once was empty, that's going to come to find Jesus. But you got comfortable, and you like, oh, well, I like the way the tennis is now. I have people say that. Well, I don't, I don't want to go big church. I'm like, well, you know what? I don't really care for small, medium, large, extra large. Like, I just want to, I just want to fill Jesus' house. You know what I'm saying? And I just not, it's not about numbers, though. I don't want you all to get me wrong. Man, it helps. I mean, it makes me feel good. And I'm like, glory be to God, we're growing. But not just that. Like, it's about people finding Jesus and wanting to come to the party and pulling up a seat and saying, I need to hear from you, Lord, because people are, are walking away from me and things are not working out in my life. But I need to have hope. And I need, to, I need you to just come in, Lord, and do what you need to do. So, so y'all got that. Don't ride by the people. Like, don't keep your eyes and ears open while you're riding, you know, because you don't know who you're going to run into. All right, you ready to move on? Say, yes, I am. Get hungry. Okay, yep. And so the next thing I want to let you know is how important it is to give invitations to people to come to church because that's what the gospel is. They need the gospel, right? They need to know about Jesus. So as the musicians come forward, that's a good sign. That means I'm almost done. A uh, couple, couple points here, three points real quick at the end of my sermon. You didn't think I was going to get to it. You're like, I know what my dad's probably thinking. He's probably like, good Lord, she ever going to get three points? It's 1139. All right, number one, we are invited. This is the gospel. What can we do with the gospel, okay? That's what I want you to know. Number one, we are invited and we accept an invitation. That's what I want you to know here. We invite people, right? They accept the invitation, and what happens? They come in, and hopefully they give their life to Jesus and they receive salvation. All right, that's the reason why we need to build the party. Number two, the next thing. We are equipped with God's word. That comes through the salvation. We find salvation, and then we become equipped with God's word. Are you following me? Last but not least, number three, 
we are commissioned and empowered. Okay, we are commissioned and empowered. And last time I checked, I said this a few weeks ago, but I really like this in the Bible where it says, go into all the world, right? Preach the gospel, right? Preach the gospel. He doesn't just use me. He, uses, he can use any of you to go and minister to somebody. He can use any of you to go tell someone about Jesus. But you got to have courage. Can you all have courage? Will you stand with me today? I want to pray over you that you would have courage and you would have strength. Uh, this is part of building the church, right? This is the part of building the church that we would go tell people about the party we have in here. Go invite people to find Jesus. So I just want to open the altar up. Maybe you want to find Jesus today. Hey, come on up. The invitation's here. We'd love to have you. We'd love to pray for you so that you can receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. But I also want to pray for everybody today that's sitting in your chairs that to just have courage, you know, because the enemy tells, oh, don't talk to them. Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. But I want to I wanna pray over you today. Can I do that? Say yes. <laughs> yeah. All right, Lord, I pray right now for every person that is here. God, it takes everybody sending the invitations out, Lord, to bring people into the party, God. Every person. Lord, you use people to invite people that I can't reach, Lord, or that someone next to us can't reach. So it takes everybody sending the invitations out, Lord, that there's a party going on in here, Lord. There are people who are here to love on people that are hurting. There are people here that want to share the good news of Jesus. So God, help us open our eyes, Lord. Help us be attentive to what we need to do. Holy Spirit, speak and move in our hearts to those that we need to help. Lord, whether it's a financial gift or, Lord, maybe it's just a cup of coffee. God, whatever it is, Lord, I ask that we would be open, Lord, that we would build the party, Lord. We know that there is more room here, God. So motivate your people, Lord. We want to build a church, and when we build a church, we start building the city. Lord, and then we start going in the country lanes. We start going in the streets, God. We'll go, Lord, wherever you want us to go to go tell people about Jesus. So, Lord, use your people, the ones that don't feel qualified, the ones that are like, I could never do that. God, give them the strength to do it. Give them the courage to do it. Lord, we love you today. We're so grateful for our salvation. We're so grateful for what you did on that cross. But more importantly, we're grateful, Lord, that you conquered the grave, God, and that you are King of kings and Lord of lords. So bless your people. Anoint your people. Give them what they need this week. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. Take a time and tell your neighbors, say, I'm glad you came to the party today. You guys are dismissed. Thank you for coming.